Thank you, James and Carlos, for receiving us in the Nordic Pavilion uh, in the 2023 architecture exhibit. And we wanted to ask you why this project was chosen to uh, represent the Nordic architecture. Well, um, the first response to that is that we we invited Joa Arnango uh, to be to be at this pavilion because he's a fantastic architect. That's uh, that was our main first reason. But secondly, it's also connected to the the question or like the broader interest that Arctis has about like uh, the northern region of the of the Scandinavian Peninsula. Um, like a Sami, uh, like a Joar Lango is a is a Sami artist and architect, and and the Sami culture is a um, is a is well is a is a is a knowledge that that for us has been interesting for a while in the museum, and we believe that it's important that a national center as Arctis like focuses and looks and presents and facilitates uh, the work of uh, of an architect like Joar Lango. The, which uh, which practice really focuses on well like the understanding of what does it mean to be to be practicing today as a um, um, in, in around topics connected to the indigeneity the coloniality uh, Sami architectural design so so for us the inviting your Nango to this pavilion is a way to bring the voice or to 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 uh, to, to um, allow or to not allow but to present like the voice of somebody that really is at the forefront of um, of questions connected to Sami architecture but also relevant for contemporary architecture as a whole is this part of a broader perspective of artists about this subject yes it is um, we have been working on on uh, questions connected to the north uh, for for a while, like uh, we have we presented a couple of years ago an exhibition that was called Kiruna Forever, that was already addressing topics connected to Sami culture. Um, uh, like uh, we have been also developing projects. We have been working with Joar before in, in, in this in this exhibition, for example. We have developed a, an entire digital project as well with him. And in the long run, we we think of Girje Gumpi as a step towards. Um, like, a, well, studying, presenting, building knowledge about um, the northern regions, what uh, the, Sami, the Sami land is called Sapmi, so it's like a bu no, um, building knowledge about Sapmi, architecture in Sapmi, and imagining uh, to develop like a, like a still like more knowledge in the form of exhibitions, but also like uh, studying our own collections and to understanding what is the relationship that exists between Sami architecture and the collections of a national center of architecture as artists. So that, 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 uh, that relationship is something that has not been solved. It's not been addressed um, historically by the museum. And for us, it's important to, to, to start move, uh, doing small steps towards like a, a better presence and like a more acknowledged uh, presence of, of the quality and richness of architectural design um, from that region. And well, behind the Nordic Pavilion there are three strong institutions that are also a part of the wider Sami culture. So how, how is this? Uh, is there a collaboration between the three museums? Is there something uh, that co really connects and unites about this exhibit? Yeah, there's a collaboration. The Nordic Pavilion is unique because it represents three countries. It's the only pavilion in the whole Biennale that represents three countries. And those three countries, of course, are next door to each other, but they're not necessarily the same. They are different political entities. That They have disagreements. They have overlap and similarities. But one of the most interesting uniting features that they have is the fact that Sapmi, as Carlos said, transcends all of these borders and stretches across Norway, Sweden, Finland, and also into the Kola Peninsula in Russia. So this year, alongside inviting Yuan Nango, there is this kind of transcendental aspect of saying, what is, what is nationhood? What is the nation state in the context of indigeneity, in the context of a person like you are, who connects to a land and communities spread across different countries. They might be citizens of one country or another, but they identify with communities that are much broader, not just in the north of Scandinavia, but in the north more generally, including Greenland and Canada. 
And I think that you are bringing, you are bringing Girdia Gumpi to the Nordic Pavilion. Of course, it's slightly odd, right? It's been traveling around Sapmi since 2018. This is the furthest it's come. Uh, it's been in Helsinki, it's been in Oslo. But it will return to Sapmi. It will continue traveling. This is just one stop in its journey. And the reason for it, or the benefit, the possible advantage of it coming to the Venice Biennale is to engage in those international dialogues. I think the fact that it's here in Leslie Loco's Biennale is particularly important. Leslie Loco's Biennale is concertedly addressing questions that Biennales before have not necessarily approached in such a clear didactic way. There are other pavilions, the Canadian pavilion, the Brazilian pavilion, that are also looking and working with indigenous practices and indigenous cultures. So the possibility, I think, to bring UR's work, which is inherently generous, you know, there, there, is, an, there is such a warmth to Giri Gumpi. It's such a total pleasure to be in this room. It's about inviting people in. It's a social space. It's about those conversations. Giri Gumpi itself is built from conversations and such interwoven collaborations with artists, researchers, craftspeople, boat builders. And you are as an instigator. Giri Gumpi, I think, has a long way to go from here. This is just one stop in its, hopefully, long, important journey. Well, and, and the, this physical space is supposed to embody many the spirit of Nordic architecture in a very abstract way. And it, it, it has always has this uh, special importance, also a, a, a weight. How do you think that it, it interacts with this uh, Well, I mean, we've, I think we've both got a lot to say about this topic because it, it is... Um, Sverfen was really young when he designed this building. And, you know, if you read, there's an amazing book by Mary Lending which goes through the whole process in which this pavilion was, was founded. Extremely Scandinavian <laughs> cultural world of, of kind of caution and complexity. But what happened out of all that was a kind of a miracle, though. Like, we all feel, I think, in a, a kind of complete awe with this building. This building is also incredibly intimidating because it is so simple, it is so pure, it is, it is so kind of almost out of this world. And it embodies one perspective towards Nordic architecture, connection to landscape, connection to the natural world. You are represents another way. And I think that them coming together and meeting is absolutely incredible. There are certain moments in the pavilion where you see a relationship between you are and Sverfen in a very direct or a very subtle way. And they are some of the most magical moments in the pavilion. I don't know, have you... Yeah, I mean, I was thinking of also, like, uh, I think that the project itself puts into crisis what Nordic is, or what Sami is, or what Norwegian or Swedish or exactly. Finnish is. Precisely the project addresses, um, like, uh, like uh, the, the importance of architecture, the importance of a space to provide different perspectives, different ideas, to, that tries to define um, like a, well, like a, like something that is in, ineffable, something that is not possible to concretize. And Juara is very, very clear about how critical he is about the specific symbolic cliches that are, have been associated historically to the idea of indigenous or the idea of Sami or the idea of Nordic. And, and I think that he, uh, his work is an apologetic with what Sami contemporary culture is and what Sami contemporary architecture is. And in that sense, I think that that, that uh, approach that is like uh, not, uh, not romanticizing the idea of the North, not romanticizing the idea of nature, it's really fresh, it's really powerful, it really gives like a lot of inspiration to how do we think about architecture and how do we imagine what the relationship with nature, a relationship with resources, a relationship with networks of collaborative work can be produced today. So, so I think like the, the, that's why the negotiation, the dialogue that exists between Joar Nango's work and all his collaborators with the Nordic Pavilion is very interesting because it produces that tension between kind of a, a, a symbol, like a, an, an image that has become so iconic of what Nordic can mean or disseminates with like a contemporary practice that puts into, into crisis that idea in itself. So, so I think that actually that's an interesting topic of, of the project, like, that, like uh, the, the, the interest to, to these this mantle specific cliches or specific 
a specific uh, like a, like a, like a images or concepts that we have usually associated with the Nordic architecture. You touched upon it as well, but one also a key one is this idea that, you know, we know in architecture more generally, this idea of the single authoritative figure, you know, the yeah. architect who yeah. made the building. You are is an initiator with a world of collaborators, and that's what Giri Gumpi is, and that's what Giri Gumpi represents, and that's what architecture is as well. So I think Giri Gumpi helps to remind us, especially in this building, the importance of collaboration um, and the relationship that can have to, to solid, good, important, crucial, meaningful architecture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.